They were quite a pair. People who did not know them very well thought they were brothers because they both had dark curly hair and large dark eyes. As it often did, Bruno's mind wandered to when his father told him that Benicio was dead. As the memory unfolded in his head, Bruno started singing a sad song, filling the bakery kitchen with sorrow. Bruno had been helping his mom in the bakery, looking forward to riding bikes with Benicio later on, when Bruno's father walked to the front door shaking. The look of heartbreak and sorrow in his father's face made Bruno's blood run cold. He had collapsed and cried at the news that a truck speeding down a hill had thrown Benicio off his bike, killing him instantly. His father let him cry as much as he wanted to, holding him in his arms. Bruno could not leave his room for two weeks. As he sang loudly in his kitchen, Bruno did not notice that a jelly donut, who wasn't really a jelly donut of course, quietly sprouted an arm that looked like a crab leg and wiped away tears from its eyes before becoming perfectly still again. As he was cutting bees into his loaves of dough, he began thinking again about Mina, so much so that he started to sing a love song. Moved by the music, the mysterious jelly donut now sprouted four arms and legs and climbed nimbly off the rack and onto the counter, where it sat, gazing at Bruno, enchanted by the sweet sound of his voice. Bruno had no idea, but every morning, this very same donut, who was more than a simple donut, would creep out from hiding and listen to him sing. One morning, Bruno heard a small noise behind him, and he abruptly stopped singing. He turned around to see what it was. Strange, he thought to himself. It had been a tiny metal sound, as if something tiny had bumped against the stack of metal pans on the counter behind him. Which is impossible, he thought because I am the only one here. Bruno looked around, but other than some sugar granules and flour on the counter, everything was where it was supposed to be. He shrugged and resumed singing precisely where he left off. Bruno continued to sing, thinking and fantasizing about his next date with Mina. Ah, what would she come up with next? She really loved the chain Italian restaurant that was in town. Bruno felt that it was not authentically Italian enough. It was not a quiet place either. However, they did have a decent wine selection. So, since Mina loved it so much, he would agree to go there at least once per month for dinner. They did make good desserts, and the breadsticks were pretty good. Not as good as his, but good enough. Bruno figured he would bring Mina flowers, a nice brightly colored bunch, to go with the special loaf he baked for her. There was that sound again, causing Bruno to spin around even more quickly than before. However, nothing was out of place. He then heard the sound of keys jiggling in the back door. Tomas entered the kitchen and smiled at Bruno. Morning, boss. He saw Tomas lean on the counter and then jump up in the air whilst looking down. Then he immediately frowned. What's the matter, Tomas? Bruno asked, noticing that Tomas had leaned on the counter in the exact spot that Bruno heard the metallic noises coming from. Shaking his head, Tomas said, It's crazy, but when I leaned on the counter, I could have sworn that I leaned my arm against something soft, but there's nothing there. Tomas swiped his hand in a waving motion, a few inches above the counter as he said this. With a shrug, he went to the front of the bakery leaving Bruno to stare thoughtfully at that counter spot again. Bruno brought a tray of cherry muffins to the front of the bakery for Tomas to load into the glass display shelves. Deciding that now was a good time to take a restroom break, Bruno turned and headed towards the back of the bakery, when all of a sudden he noticed something peculiar, a small trail of sugar that led from one of the display cabinets up front all the way to the back room. Bruno noticed that the counter also had some sugar crystals on it, Tomas, Bruno called out, can you sweep the floor, please? I think I spilled sugar. You got it, boss, Tomas called back, rolling his eyes. He swept the floors in the front and back while Bruno was in the restroom. Once again, he had the strange feeling he was being watched. Trying to shake it off, he went to the front of the store and continued to prepare for the morning rush of people clamoring for Bruno's coffee and donuts. He was lucky that it was so busy, otherwise he might be out of a job. 
After some time, Bruno brought another tray to the front, his huge, warm cinnamon rolls. And that's when he noticed a lady walking a small dog into his shop. Bruno smiled. He loved pets, and every time he saw one, he thought of his own pets back home. He never cared much for animals until befriending Benicio. Benicio had a little mouse, Paolo, and Bruno learned how to care for animals from Benicio. Benicio loved Paolo. Paolo would sit on his shoulder, tiny whiskers twitching and sparkling bright eyes, watching every move Benicio made. Benicio eventually bought one for Bruno. Bruno took him home and made a little house for him out of ice cream sticks, a shoebox, and glue. He would feed the little mouse, which he named Luca, fresh cheese and warm milk. Luca would squeak with joy every time he saw Bruno. One day, Luca would not wake up. It turned out he was dead. Bruno noticed a bit of blood dried on its tiny mouth. Bruno cried profusely for days. Benicio brought him another mouse a couple of months later. This one, Bruno named Luna, because she was the color of the full moon on a clear sky. Bruno doted on Luna, just like he did with Luca. But this time, he spent even more time talking to his new pet and carrying her all over the place, even sometimes to his mother's bakery. He would keep her in a small cage in the kitchen as he helped his mother. As long as he didn't touch her while he worked, she was okay with Bruno bringing Luna to work. A week passed, and suddenly, Luna was dead too. Bruno found her lifeless in her little cage when he awoke one morning. He thought he was a bad parent. He felt that perhaps he was incapable of being nurturing enough to care for others. Maybe I should not be trusted with ever caring for another, he thought to himself. And this broke his heart. After his mother was murdered, Bruno's father told him a terrible secret. He told Bruno that his mother was so jealous of the love that Bruno gave his pets that she poisoned them both. Bruno was horrified. He still had not had a pet since Luca and Luna, but he always longed for companionship. But because he spent so much time at the bakery, he could not properly take care of a pet. It wasn't like he could bring a mouse to work with him. The customers knew they'd boycott his shop for sure. Feeling melancholy again, Bruno went back to baking and singing, this time singing a slow, low-pitched song about longing and loss. Soon, the thoughts of his two dead pets were once again out of his head, and he was singing about happy things, about love and a happy life and Mina. Bruno was once again unaware that two small eyes were watching him and listening to him with great pleasure. The small creature, which resembled a jelly donut, was swaying softly on lanky metallic legs that jutted out sideways from its body. <laughs>